that I know, but I'm glad I know that. Amen. I'm glad I know that my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Let's all stand across the congregation, if you would, tonight. Amen. I want some of our ushers to come this evening. Amen. We're going to take up a special love offering for Brother Sean, his family. Boy, Brother Sean and his family have been a blessing to us this week. God's used them in a mighty way, most powerful messages I've heard in a while. Amen. And Lord certainly helped us on, on these nights. And Looking forward to what God's going to do throughout the rest of the week, amen. And everything that you give will go straight to Brother Sean. And I tell you what, I know he's uh, been a blessing to this church already, amen. And I'm thankful for all of his family tonight. So let's pray for the offering tonight, amen. I'm going to ask Brother Donnie Dalton to do that for us if he would. Father, thank you again for the house of God. Thank you, Lord, that there's still possibilities for a revival touch. And even in these last days, and I'm grateful for the church, Brother Scotty, oh and the evangelists, and all us. the singing, and all that you do. May you get ultimate glory. May you be lifted up. Amen. And you said if you'd be lifted up, yes, together, Lord. you'd draw all men. We're interested, Lord, in seeing our loved ones saved. Yes, Lord. Help saved, us, God. Our community saved. Yes. Like the Lord Jesus yes. uh, comes after the church. Yes. May we be on our way. Yes, God. Yes. Move us, Lord. Move us. As they really are. Yes, yes. Lord. Touch now this time together. Fall upon the gift, and I'll bless your name. Uh, for all that you do in Jesus' name, uh, and for his sake I pray. Amen. Amen. you walk around, shake hands with somebody, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. seated tonight. Amen. Let me say something. Amen. This altar is a place. We have seen God do some things this week already. Amen. If it, it, I don't, you know, there was several times last night that folks come to the altars more than one time. Some came three times. And that's all right. That's perfectly all right. But the Holy Ghost gets, you know what got last meeting, last night's meeting started the way it did? Somebody just obeyed the Lord. 
And if you'll just obey the Lord tonight, we'll see what God will do. Amen. Before we ask the Tab family to come sing, we're going to ask Miss Jacqueline to come sing for us tonight. Amen. They've been here a few nights, and uh, we've heard some news about her. She can sing, so we're going to let her sing uh, for us tonight a song before we turn the Tab family loose. Amen. We're tickled to death that they're here tonight, so we're just going to let her sing for us. Amen. And Brother Sean, we'll just turn you all loose when she gets done, brother. Judgment Day. Yeah. There's a great reward of time to pay. Yeah. Better make it your man, he can be on his way. <laughs>
waters. <laughs> Brother Larry it went down to a three hour message. Now it's a two hour message. Somebody better run and get this other one. <laughs> Brother Larry said that's a four hour message lined up up there. <laughs> Praise God. Well it's good to see at the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Might a fine place to be on a Thursday night. Amen. In the year 2014, as we get closer to the Lord coming. Amen. You know, he said that we're supposed to not forsake the assembling together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That means more than we used to go to church. I don't think very many Christians see him coming. They don't see the day approaching because they don't want to go to church a whole lot anymore. I'm telling you what, if you see his, his day of coming and it's approaching on us, you can't help but want to be down in the house of God. This is the right place to be every chance you get. And thank God for the house of God tonight. Take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel chapter 37 tonight. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Stand with me while we read a little bit, if you would. The Bible said in Ezekiel 37 and verse number 1, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Let me do something here. He said, move it up if it starts at. I don't know what the position on the tie has to do with that. I'm just doing what I was told. And caused me, verse number two, to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. No, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking And the bones came together, bone to his bone. When I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I'm interested in verse number two tonight. The word of God said, He calls me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and though they were very dry. Father, I pray now you speak to our heart tonight, Father. Lord God, I believe this is the message you want, Father, and I pray now that you would. Uh, God, you'd help us to put everything aside and pay close attention, God, to what you might want to say to us tonight. Father, may we not be distracted, God. Dear Holy Ghost of God, move in among us and draw us into the presence of Almighty God. God, touch thy servant with the anointing power, Father. Lord, those that are lost in our midst, I pray, God, tonight, would you save their soul from hell? God, would you make it clear to them their need, God, of that breath of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help we your children, God. Stay those, Father, who are about to slip out. God, speak to us now, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray it, amen. 
And amen. I was fixing to ask for one of those Benny Hinn mics. You can have this thing. Thank God it ain't. Amen. Amen. The Valley of Dry Bones. We're in the day and time when we're in valleys. Uh, we don't see a whole lot of mountaintop anymore. And when you do get up on the mountaintop, about the time you begin to throw your hands up and rejoice, your feet slip, you start sliding back down in the next valley. It's from valley to valley that we are in these days, in these last days. And it used to be, you know, maybe back in the late 70s and 80s, that we could hold a meeting and uh, be at a camp meeting, revival, whatever. And it would last us six or eight months, maybe a whole year. But nowadays, we hold a meeting and it doesn't last us two weeks. In fact, it don't last some three days before they're not already in a mess again. That's just the world that we're living in. That's the times that we are in. We are living from valley to valley. Valleys come in our life by several different ways, but maybe if I could just narrow it down to about four different ways, sometimes it's just oppression. And in Daniel, if I could paraphrase, he said it something like this, that in the last days, Satan will be wearing out the saints. And we are under great oppression if you're trying to live for God these days. I mean, just in your own little, I'm not talking about doing big work for God. I'm talking about your own little spiritual life. There's just such oppression that are on God's people. As the devil has, listen, he's honed in on his ability to attack us. He knows what your weakness is. He don't stop. He doesn't relent. He just keeps tapping and keeps punching until he can get a KO on, out on you and listen until he gets you so oppressed that you'll finally just throw in the towel. Whatever your weakness is, the battle is a battle of faith. And whatever will, listen, whatever will keep you from having faith, that's what he'll work on. That's the screws he'll turn in your life. It may be that you, listen, you have a, you have a weakness in your, in your makeup with God that you feel like you're not saved a lot of the time. And if that's the case, he'll just keep tapping at that. He'll keep tapping at that. He'll keep bringing it up, making you question it. And if he can, he'll get you under oppression. It may be that and for you it might be that you don't know if God really cares about you. If God really going to meet your needs and he'll just keep tapping in there and causing you to be discouraged and causing you to question where is God and for you not you'll throw in the towel. Amen. That's right. We're in the valley of depression these days. But then I'd say also we've got heartaches. There's a heartache right down the road tonight. Many people are having to bear and face tonight. And we are dealing with great heartaches as God's people. We're seeing God's people have to go through so much. And as we watch it, it breaks our heart and troubles yeah. us and, and our own heart begins to break and it seemed like we don't get a breath before we got another heartbreak coming our way. In the last year or two, probably four or five of the great old men of God have died just one right. One just died this Sunday morning just before he walked into his pulpit he gave up the ghost and died and it seemed like there's no relenting of heartbreak that goes on in our lives and, uh, and in, uh, in our families and in our churches and everywhere we look, there is a heartbreak going on. Amen. That's right. And then there are the valleys of discouragement. Seem like you take two steps forward and you take five backwards at the same time. You just get discouraged and 
It seems like you can't gain any spiritual ground. And when you think you have just got up on top of it, there you go again. You're back backwards somewhere. How you done slipped or whatever's happening. And you just get discouraged. And some of you, maybe you've been trying to settle some things in your life. This is a new year, 2014. Maybe you wanted to read your Bible a little better this year. But here we are fixing the end of the third month of the year. You just ain't really done real good. Just deal with discouragement. And we try to do things for God and try to build for God, which is what we're supposed to be doing. And as we try to put our hand to the plow, it seems like the rocks are everywhere and the bit on the plow keeps breaking. And listen, we, we just trying to do something for God, but it's discouraging everywhere we turn. But then I want to say there is the valley of sin. Sin is no game. And that prodigal thought he'd be all right just go to the far country with some of daddy's money. But what he didn't plan on was that there's sin in the far country. He didn't plan on and somebody said sin will take you farther than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you want to pay. And there is the valley of sin. And it may not be gross sin, although that is plaguing us these days. And I'll tell you something, you got no business committing adultery. If you're married, you better be faithful to your wife. You better be faithful to your husband, ma'am. You ain't got any business flirting down in them hallways down at the job site and dressing where you can attract the attention of the men. And sir, you've got no business whistling after any woman but your own woman. You got no business walking in Walmart and uh, and just eyeballing everything that you can put your eyeballs on. Hey, put away those eyes of adultery. You've got no business messing with such you ain't got any business tonight if you're a shacking up with somebody. That is still fornication. That is still illicit sin. And you got no business with it. You're supposed to be married if you're gonna lay up one with another. And you got no business in that kind of stuff. But I'm not just talking about gross sins, sins of Sodom that are going on all around us. And, and we're losing some to it. It's an abomination unto God. Well, what about the little sins? Those things, those things that you deal with every day of your life. That's why I said in Hebrews, a sin which does so easily beset us. He said you've got to lay it aside. Not, Not like lay it aside in the attic of your home. That would be what Paul said in Romans to make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He's talking about running a race. He's talking about laying it aside on the side of the racetrack. And when you lay it aside, you keep on going and it stays way back there where you laid it aside and you never deal with it anymore. But those valley of sin, and and listen, you want to get victory, but every time you turn around, you're committing that same stupid, idiotic sin again. And you stay in a perpetual valley of sin. I'm afraid we have abused the definition and interpretation of 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It is not a Catholic doctrine. It has nothing to do with you running through a list at the end of your day of all the sins you committed. If that's what you were taught, you live in bondage because you'll never get all your sins confessed. That's not what that verse is about. You were forgiven at the cross of every sin you've ever committed. That context has to do with having fellowship with God. And what it's saying is, be honest with God. Quit trying to cover your sin. If I cover my sin, I shall not prosper. Quit trying to cover it up and smooth it down. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's dealing with me just living an honest life before God. So if you just get honest with God and say, God, I got this lust and it keeps whooping me. 
And God, it is this. And I want to lay it at your feet. And I want more of you. And I'm going to fight to have more of you. And if you'll do that, it may take you a little while. But there it, quit singing victory in Jesus when you don't really have it. And you'll never have it unless you're willing to lay your sin aside on the side of the track and run on beyond it. And then you'll find there is real victory in Jesus' time. And so there is valleys that we are living in these days. In verse number one, he said, in the hand of the Lord's palm man carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. Behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. I want you to look around the valley that we are in these days. He said, I looked around that valley and he said, I saw a whole lot of bones. He said, everywhere I looked around about me, the valley was full of bones. <laughs> and he said, there were very many Many who are greater than I am. Many who, who are better off spiritually than you are. Many who, who are closer to God than we are. Many who are more spiritual, more holy, more righteous. Many who did more for God than what you and I do. Many who loved him better than we do. And he said, I looked around the valley and it was full of bones of saints who did not make it through the valley. Whether it's a valley of oppression, a valley of heartache, whether it's a valley of discouragement, whether well, it's a valley of sin, he said, I looked around and there were very many bones around about me and these people, they, they, this valley I'm going through, these people, they didn't make it through this valley. Hey, child of God, the Bible said be vigilant. The Bible said watch ye and pray. I'm saying tonight, you better be real careful Better men and better women than you have been in your valley and they didn't make it. Their bones are laying around us tonight. He used the word carried in verse number one. It's just the way life has gone. Sometimes by God's leading, Sometimes by my own leading. Did you know that you can make a decision today and that decision will continue to multiply until 10 years from now you look and you say, how did I get here? It's just a simple decision way back when that led you to where you are. This is just the way life has gone. And I'm in this valley. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want this heartache. I didn't want this oppression. I don't want to be discouraged. And I don't want this sin to keep whooping me, but this is where I'm at. Then he said this, he used the word set. He set me there. Set has to do with a space of time, however long it may be. Did you know that you have no control over how long a valley is? There have been people who have been in valleys for years. They still aren't out of them. There have been great men of God that died in the valley. C.H. Spurgeon spent the last latter part of his life sitting in his chair in total, total depression. And he never got out of the valley. I got a preacher friend in Canada 
there was a time in his life, a great man of God, and he said he, he just was so deep down, said he couldn't help but cry. He cried all the time for, for 30 plus days. All he did was cry and cry and cry. Said when he came to church, he was supposed to preach. He would hide in a corner in the nursery and just sit there and cry and cry and cry and cry until it was time to preach, and then he'd walk up there and preach. Then he'd go back to his house and cry and cry and cry. You have no control how, how, how long the valley is going to be in your life. You have no control over that. Sit down in the valley for a space of time. Following God, child of God, oftentimes means being in valleys. I know that makes no sense, but it's a fact. <laughs> The more you follow God and the closer you get to him and the more your life you give up to him, the more lonely it becomes. John said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He said, I'm by myself trying to serve God. But he kept on serving him. And he kept on going even though he lived his life in a valley. I want you to notice in verse number four some things. I'm going to do this a little backwards out of this passage and I'll be done. I want you to notice in verse number four, he said, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. How'd these bones get here? Well, one thing is they wouldn't hear the word of the Lord. They wouldn't listen to God in their life. They, listen, they wouldn't... <laughs> They wouldn't listen to the good instruction of God to flee, the Bible said, youthful lust, to stew evil. Hey, and he said in Proverbs, go back, go, go not by the way of evil men, turn from it, pass by it, and turn away. Let not thine eyelids look to the right hand or the left hand, but let them look right off. But they would not hear the word of God. I said they wouldn't hear the word of God. That's why these bones in this valley. And others wouldn't hear when God said, my grace is sufficient. And they wouldn't hear him. And they thought it was too much. And they thought the oppression was too much. And the discouragement too much. And they wouldn't hear that God said, I'd never leave thee nor forsake thee. That he said, I will perfect that which concerneth thee. That David said, the Lord thinketh upon me. They would not hear the word of God. And others wouldn't hear when he said, <laughs> I'm able to be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. I'm able to understand why your heart hurts. I'm, under, I'm able to feel the heartache that you're going through. I'm there with you. And they would not hear the word of God. And they ended up staying in the valley dead, dry bones. And how many are no longer with us? Because they refuse to hear the word of God. And if the devil can get you so twisted up, and he will if he can, he'll get you where you can barely hear it. I mean, your heart is so overwhelmed and your mind is so much in confusion that you can barely hear it. The only thing I can tell you is when you're there, just go ahead and hold on to the word of God and read it. Just keep opening up. I remember the day in my life when all my life went to the bottom of the barrel and I spent six weeks doing nothing but reading the word of God and listening to Alexander Scorby read me the word of God eight and ten hours a day. That's all I did. Life was so awful. I remember going in a hospital and knowing what I needed to get 
so nobody would know I committed suicide and watched till that nurse was gone and grabbed the right needle and put it in my pocket and went out because I knew nobody would know that I committed suicide. If I used what was in that needle, I know what it is to be in the bottom of the barrel and not be able to hear real good. But I'm telling you tonight, go ahead and still read the word of God. Still listen to the preacher. Try to hear from God in the valley. Because if you don't, he said, he, he said, he said, whom he may devour, the one he may devour is the one that's hurt and wounded trying to keep up with the pack but can't really. That's the antelope that's going down. That's the one he's taking out. The one that don't feel a real, a real good. That's the one the devil's gonna take down. Hey, that valley you're in, that valley you go through, look around you, a whole lot more went through it and they didn't make it out the other end of it. They wouldn't hear the word of God. And I want to say this. In verse number six, he said, tell them that ye shall know that I am the Lord. They did not realize that their God was the Lord. <laughs> verse number nine, he said, saith the Lord God. When you know he's God and that he is the Lord God of your valley, then you can make it. God means the strong, faithful one. <laughs> Lord means the self-existent one who reveals himself. <laughs> it's one thing to know he's the God of my valley. It's another thing to know he's the Lord God of my valley. To know that he is the, the, the self-existent one who reveals himself as the strong and faithful one to me. Amen. You know he's God tonight. But that don't mean you know that he's the Lord God tonight. That he's self-existent, yeah. revealing himself to you, that he's strong and that he's faithful. See, they didn't know that. They didn't know that or they didn't believe that. How many times have we watched Israel in the Old Testament and seen them go through time and time and time again? because they didn't believe God was faithful, yep. strong and able. Yep. And God himself looked down and said, how often would I have succored thee? Yep. Yep. I'd, I'd have hid you under the shadow of my wing. Yep. You'd have just let me. <laughs> and them people that are no longer with us and the valley's took in them and they're now dry bones in the valley, that's because they decided somewhere along the line that God wasn't faithful to them, that God wasn't strong enough to carry them through and they would not believe that he is the Lord God of the valley. So very quickly, let me give you this and I'm done. Verse number nine said they were slain. They ended up dead. They ended up uh, uh, succumbing to whatever was uh, coming upon them. They fainted under oppression. They were crushed with their heartaches. They quit because of their discouragement and they fell because of their sin. And the Bible said they ended up slain. How do you become slain? I'll give you this and I'm done. I'm gonna do it backwards. I want you to notice in verse number two, number one, they were very dry. You cannot stay faithful to God these days with a dry Christianity. You cannot do it. It's not possible. See, we're not 
I understand Revelation. I understand Laodicea. But really, you want to know what the you want to know what the label of this church age is? Apostasy. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's the church age we're in. Apostasy. Yeah. A falling away. And you cannot make it to the end living a dry, empty Christian life. He said they were very dry. We need revivals. We need them about every other week these days. Pastors, what they need to do is about every three weeks say we having two services this week. One on Tuesday and one on Thursday. Or one on Wednesday and one on Friday. I'm telling you, that's where we're at. And you child of God, you can't make it not opening the word of God and looking in it every day. You can't make it without getting on your face and looking for a fresh slice of heavenly bread of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. He said, I'm gonna rain manna down on you. But if you don't eat it, it'll be no good the next day. You're gonna have to go out and gather some more the next day and that's what you've got to do child of God is you have to keep yourself moist you have to keep yourself watered before God Almighty so they were very dry and uh, and spiritually dryness will lead us to the place of bones in the valley. Reversing the order, in verse number six he said, I will lay sinews upon you and will cover, and will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. Here's how, here's how the bones ended up in this valley. Number one, the skin was ripped off. That's your outside covering. That's your protection. Your body, that's the first line of defense is the skin. If the skin is burnt off or ripped off, we've got to do something major in a hurry or you're fixing to die. The whole body will succumb. All the bacterias are ready to jump in there and to begin to gain green and destroy the body. But do you realize how much your skin protects your body? I mean, you can go along this life and live and none of this stuff gets you and it's all around us. Some of it's even on you. Did you know that mercy's on your skin? Did you know that tonight? It's laying on your skin. That's where it lives. But your skin is keeping it at bay. Your skin's keeping it from destroying. It's keeping you protected. And what happened to these bones in the valley is they lost their covering. They lost their protection. They ceased to read the word of God day by day. They ceased to be in prayer day by day. They ceased to be faithful to the house of God and their covering began to be ripped off of their body, off of their life and they ended up as bones in the valley. You need your protection. Can I give you this? God didn't tell you to study to show yourself approved because he needed something out of it. God knows that book. It's him. It's It's him. That's him. He knows that book. He wants you to know that book. So when you don't get your devotion, I mean you jumped out of bed and you ran so fast you missed your devotion, why would you hang your head and then miss the next five days like God's mad at you? God's not mad, God's sad. He wanted to tell you something that day. But if you'll get back in there the next morning there, he'll be ready to tell you something. You're covering, you must you must maintain your protection so that you can continue to live for God, so that you can make it through the valley. Did you know if you're not in a valley tonight, the best thing you can do is start hoarding up all them promises of God because when you get in the valley, those are the things that'll carry you through. They're your protection. You don't, hey, you, you say, well, I feel spiritual. I don't really need to read the word of God. Yes, you do. You're gonna need it in about three weeks. You better get in that book, bear your face in it and get you some covering on yourself. They went in that valley and their skin got ripped off. Then I want to say the skin has to do with the covering. You find he mentions the flesh coming upon you. That's the inner workings. That's the muscles. Skin got ripped off. But then secondly, the flesh began to fail and to break down. That faithfulness begins to falter. No longer serving God like you used to. No longer doing what you, some of you probably used to be a Sunday school teacher at some point. 
or something. And man, we got preachers that are no longer preaching. We've got Sunday school teachers that are no longer teaching. We've got children of God that used to do, some of you probably used to clean the toilet and then you decided you're too big for that anymore and you ain't gonna clean it no more. It still needs cleaning. It still needs to be done. Maybe one of you, somewhere along the line, you actually mowed the grass one time. Or you blew, you took your, and you blew the leaves off, but you don't do it anymore. You say, preacher, I don't really do anything. You're in real trouble tonight. What are you doing for God? What have you accomplished for God? Why don't you do something, my soul? He didn't save you to sit there. Do something for God. But when you get in this valley and you don't have any skin on you, the workings begin to break down and you're no longer faithful at your post anymore. The workings that you do in the kingdom of God, they begin to falter. They begin to slip. Flesh, the workings, no longer serving. And then I see the sinew. You know what sinew does? I mean, you're a deer hunter. Oh, my soul, come on now. We're out in the country. What's the matter with you guys? You better go shoot Bambi. Won't be long. Obama will make it where you can't buy the cow. What's the boarding cow name, brother? Where are you? Bessie. You don't be able to buy Bessie anymore. You'll have to shoot the king's deer to eat. But you, when you clean deer, you see that sinew in there. You try to get that out because it's no good to eat. You know what that sinew does? It binds that body together. <laughs> and so they got in this valley and their covering was ripped off. And then their workings, their their flesh began to fail. But then the bindings begin to break. The Bible said they went out of us because, from us because they were not of us. The bindings begin to fail. Did you know you need Christian fellowship? You need it more than you need water. We have to have each other. In Hebrews chapter 10 where he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I don't know why everybody thinks that's such a terrible thing. And I don't know, why is that terrible? Because he, he talks about the reason you don't forsake it is so that you can come together and exhort one another. That's why we come to church to exhort one another. You need, listen, you need folks to come, God's children, so that you can gain from that. And they need you to come so that they can gain from you. But these bones, the sinew, have begun to have the body begin to break in their life. And you know what? They don't they don't come as much as they used to. They're not as faithful as they used to be. They show up every now and then. And before you know it, they're no longer, and you know what? It's a simple thing like a job that finally he got a new job, but it's asking you to work on Sunday. Any preacher in here can name you stories of people who took a job, said, Preacher, I finally got a job, but it's requiring me to work on Sunday, but I'll be there on Wednesday night. It doesn't take more than three months, and they're not there at all anymore. The bindings begin to break off of that life. And listen, you do yourself good to tie yourself in thick with the brethren. I'm talking about tie yourself in so tight that listen, every time we get it come together, there you are suffocating us because you need us. You hear me tonight? You need the brethren. You need the brethren. You need us tonight. God set it up that way. You can't make it without us. You better renew the binding of Christian fellowship in your life. I'm talking about right fellowship. People that believe just like you. Because if you go with that other stuff, you'll be just like them and not even know what you believe anymore. You're in an independent Baptist church. That's who you are. We're not the vine down the road or the glory praise worship center. We're an independent Baptist church. That's who your stripe is, and that's where you tie your bindings up at. 
The bindings begin to break on these people. And then lastly, let me give you this. He talks about the bones. Did you know if you didn't have any bones, you'd be a pile of plasma laying on the floor? And bones is what's keeping you up. It is your structure. It is the supports of your body. And what happened to these bones is all this, the skin got ripped off, the flesh began to fail, the bindings began to snap, and before you know it, the bones themselves crumbled down. The framework was completely gone out of these people. And we, hey, as we pass through the valley, we look around and we see them. And and listen, they think they're okay, but their whole life's bottomed out. Everything's crumbled in their life. The framing's all tore up. There's no structure. They're double-minded. They're easily swayed with every wind. They just got nothing steady going on in their life. And if you got any spiritual discernment at all about you, you'd have to look at a person like that and say, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to end up where they are in the valley. I want to make it through the valley to the other side. And very quickly, I'll give you this. I believe it's verse number nine. He talks about prophesying that the breath of life might come into these bones and stand them up and make them alive. That's what we need tonight. It's the Holy Ghost of God to breathe fresh and anew in us in our valleys when it's overwhelming, when it's oppression. Don't let the devil win. Don't let him bend your ear. Get the fresh breath of the Holy Ghost of God on the scene. When you're discouraged and you feel like quitting, don't give in. Get the fresh breath of the Holy Ghost of God when sin is plaguing your life. Get the Holy Ghost of God on the scene. He'll carry us through the valley. I did all this backwards because this is where we need to be. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God so that we walk through each valley and not end up where those bones are. We come on out the other side and go through the next one and through the next one until he comes. He said, these bones stood up and said, there was an exceeding great army. And Brother Booth said, we are the salvation army. That's who we are. And as an army, we can walk across the valleys. We can march arm in arm across the valleys until he comes. But as an individual, we won't make it. We won't make it. We'll end up among the bones. But if we'll stand together as an army before God, he said, listen, behold a shaking, verse seven, a noise and a shaking, and the bones came together. Child of God, we need one another. Dear Rockview Baptist Church, we need one another. We need to stand together. And when one of us is in a deep valley, somebody get hold of them and strengthen them and comfort them through the valley. Make a phone call. When the Holy Spirit of God puts somebody on your heart, my soul, right then and there, pick up the phone and call them and see what's going on. Go get in your car and drive down the road and take them some muffins and say, this won't sit down with you a little while. Cry with you. This won't sit down with you a little while and rejoice with you. I just want to strengthen you in the Lord as you're going through your valley. The reason we're losing so many is because this thing was not Christianity. The church was not designed for us to operate by ourselves. It wasn't designed that way. And every one of them bones in that valley is people who got off by themselves and the devil ripped them apart and they never came out the other side. Whatever the heartache may be, whatever the oppression may be, 
whatever the discouragement is and whatever sin is plaguing you. Don't get off by yourself. Stay around the church. Stay together. And seek the fresh breath of the Holy Ghost of God upon you and upon his church. That's how we can go through the valley and make it through and not be another dry bone in the middle of the valley. Let's stand and bow our head tonight. Father, we love you. God, thank you for loving us, Father. Lord God, thank you that you do care about us. And Lord God, you know every heart in here tonight, things that we're going through. It doesn't take much to get us out these days. It doesn't take much. God, please help us to be serious tonight about our valleys, the things, God, that bring us down. Father, please speak to our heart. In Jesus' name I pray it. As she begins to play tonight, the altar's down here. I'm comfortable that I preach what God wanted me to preach tonight. I don't know where you are in your life. Somebody said you're either in a valley, you're fixing to be in a valley, or you're coming out of a valley. That's where we live. It doesn't take but just a little bit for some oppression some heartache, some discouragement, or even some sin to bring us down. But you come get with God tonight and renew your bindings. Renew your muscles in the Lord. Renew your coverings. Every head bowed, every eye closed as she begins to sing tonight. Maybe you know somebody that's in a valley. Won't you be spiritual enough to call their name out? Maybe bring it down here tonight and call their name out. They can't make it unless you lift them up. Unless we intercede one for another. The valley is full of bones. Look around your life. Look around. The valley is full of bones. Come on. Come on, folks are coming. Come on. In your life, the valley is full of bones. You young people, listen to me tonight. There's bones laying over in the casket. Somebody didn't make it through the valley. Better take this thing serious. Better think, take this living for God serious. You can't make it through playing around with spirituality. Playing around with Christianity. Better flee youthful lust. Better get a devotion to God in your life right now in your young age where you read your Bible because you want to know more about God, not because somebody told you to. Where you spend time in prayer because you want to talk to God and hear from heaven. This is no game. The valley is full of bones. People didn't make it through. She's still a singing. You say, Well, I feel like I'm planted. Did you know that a tree does never stop growing its roots? It is consistently sending out new roots. You think you're planted, but if you're not growing new roots for God, you'll be the one the wind blows over. Searching new opportunities to serve God looking for new ways to learn more about him, growing new roots. That's how you stay planted. Valley's full of bones. All around our lives, the valley's full of bones. Let's not be a casualty. Come on, Richard. Amen. Everything he preached tonight was truth, Brother Ronnie. 
I mean, you may be in this building tonight, and you've probably thrown in the towel in your life, your Christian walk. Amen. About 20 miles from here, at another church, there's a funeral going on. And I'm not making light of that, but bring brevity to this situation is, you are not promised tomorrow. There is not, I don't care how healthy you are, I don't care how strong in body you are. Friend, you are not promised another, not just tomorrow, you're not promised another second. There's one thing that there I'm for sure of, to be right with the Lord. To be right with the Holy God for one day, whether it be at the great white throne judgment, that's going to be for all those that are lost. All those that will not be found in that Lamb's book of life. I'm glad I'm saved. And if you're not saved, you better make sure. And there's going to be that what Paul said, that great dreadful judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, that each and every one of his children will stand before God one day. Friend, you better make sure you're right with him. I want to be found faithful. There's no greater joy in my life, Brother Charles, than serving the Lord. Oh, you say, preacher, I'm having my fun now. I'm doing everything. I'm trying to live my life now. It's what a lot of people's done this week. But their bodies are going to be six foot under the ground. You say, preacher, oh, they say that all the time. They say that all the time. But, but dad, the obituaries are full every week. The obituaries are always in the Daily Post Athenian. They're always in the Chattanooga Times Free Press, the Knoxville News Sentinel. Death ain't no respect to a person. God is in control of all things. He has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Friend, he controls your next heartbeat. And there's a lot of people, Brother Donnie, that are walking on dangerous ground tonight. There's a lot of people walking on dangerous ground tonight. And folks, that's why we need to get on these altars and pray again. Sing one more verse, Miss Lydia. There's still some praying. What about it? You need to come in this altar and pray tonight. Got one more verse. My heart has no Where do you stand with an almighty God? This is how close you are to getting help tonight. This is, don't let this haunt you tonight. Let this be a help, not a haunting to you, but a helping. still some praying amen we, we were still praying last night and folks were still coming if you want to sing something else Miss Lydia sometimes brother Ronnie people and brother Donnie I know can say this you can look out throughout the congregation and people wear it they wear it like a shroud they wear their misery People know where they're at. When you get in a place where the word of God is truly preached and the spirit of God is there, God will open hearts. God will open minds. People know where they're at. And God will give you chances because he's got mercy. He's got long suffering. And folks, you'll walk out that door tonight. As Brother Donnie's had folks, countless folks walk out Mount Verd Baptist Church. We've had folks walk out of Rockview Baptist Church thinking I've got it all figured out. I've got this whole thing figured out. I've got it all planned out. I'm going to be all right. If you ain't got God, you ain't all right. If you ain't got him, you ain't all right. Say more one verse or something, Miss Lydia. 
Let's see if God will do something in this place tonight. Somebody needs to come. Some of you ladies come pray with Miss Tammy tonight. What about it? He ain't through yet. He ain't through yet. If the Lord's speaking to you, now's the time to come. Stop worrying about who's in front of you, who's sitting beside of you. You need to go to him tonight. That's what we all need to be. Why don't you quit being miserable tonight? Why don't you come get some joy? Why don't you just come on and get some real peace inside of your heart tonight? Quit trying to play games with God. You'll never win. You'll never win. You want to be like Jesus? God's people said, amen, amen. Boy, wasn't the message wonderful tonight? Amen. Prayer warriors, don't quit praying. Don't quit praying God's not through. You say, preacher, we may not, why well, not see it happen this week? And we may not, but God's already planted some seeds. Amen. I believe God, God's already working. Amen. Don't get defeated. Don't get discouraged. Amen. Just keep praying. Keep pressing, amen. We're going to see, amen, God do a great work. I thank you so much for being here tonight. Brother Donnie, I appreciate you being here this evening, amen. I love you, Brother Donnie. You're such a blessing to us in just a few months. Community revival will be coming around again, and we're looking forward to that, amen. It was a joy last year, amen. I was in the one, we was in one, there was five preachers preaching at one time. I like that, amen. That was wonderful, amen. And uh, good to have uh, Chuck and Brad's sister Sandy and, and Nathan with us tonight. We're glad to have them with us tonight. These folks back here, Jacqueline sung for us, amen. Appreciate them. Make sure you tell the Tab family how much you appreciate them. They've got their CDs and stuff back there in the back, amen. We got one more night, amen. Friday night, amen. Let's go, go praying, come praying. And I, I, you know, it's not over yet. And I, I, you say, well, preacher, revival will be over tomorrow night. Revival shouldn't end tomorrow night. Revival should carry on. Amen. Pray for one another. Let's go pray. Ask somebody to come with you to the house of God tomorrow night. All right, let's be dismissed in prayer, thanking God for what he's done in our hearts tonight. I'm going to ask my dad if he would dismiss us in prayer tonight.
Praise you, God. Yes. Yes. Lord, I pray you'll continue to bless Brother Sean and his family. Yes, yes. God, I pray that you'll use them here tomorrow night. Yes. God, make somebody be saved. Yes. Go with them as they go on their way. Use them for your glory. Bless this state. Yes. Bless this church family. Yes, Lord. Give them a great revival. That is my yes. prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.